Live from ABC7, this is the Great Pacific Air Show. Hey, it's a weekend full of aerial excitement in Southern California with a celebration of the best in aviation. I'm Giovanna Lotta. And I'm Veronica Miracle. Thanks for joining us for this Eyewitness News special presentation of the Great Pacific Air Show over Huntington Beach. This year's show features three jet teams from three different countries. The U.S. Air Force Thunderbirds, from Great Britain, the Red Arrows of the Royal Air Force, and the Canadian Forces Snowbirds. This is a very rare opportunity to see three air demonstration teams, three national teams all flying in one location. The Thunderbirds call themselves America's Ambassadors in Blue. The air demonstration team dates back to 1953. Today, they fly F-16 Fighting Falcons in formation in air shows and events around the world. We go all over the place, and our job is to show the taxpayer what exactly the Air Force is doing. The Red Arrows are finishing up a two-month tour of North America. The British military air display team dates back to 1965, and the pilots show off their speed, agility, and precision with the Hawk T-1A. Everywhere we've gone, we've been received uh, really well. We get a great reception from our American audience here. Slightly different to what we get back at home. We're very polite in the UK. Everyone does, you know, polite clapping here. We get much more energetic responses. You know, people whooping and hollering. It's, it's great. It makes us feel really proud, really, really welcome. The Snowbirds are the flight demonstration team of the Royal Canadian Air Force. Pilots show off their skills in the CT-114 Tudor, a jet used for decades to train Canadian Forces pilots. The three teams say taking part in a show like this demonstrates how the country's military forces work together every day. We built a friendship over the years with those guys, and uh, so to be able to, to be in one spot with those teams is pretty exciting. This is just the fourth year for the Great Pacific Air Show, and it's an event that's growing in popularity. We call it a family-friendly outdoor lifestyle festival because we really believe in getting families and friends outdoors, connecting them something new and different, getting them off of their phones and getting them focused on the inspiration that is aviation. More than two million people are expected to see the aerial acrobatics from Huntington Beach over the three-day event. Well, I love the military jets, all the military hardware, because it's, it's close to my heart, so I really enjoy it. Um, I really like Warbirds, and I've done this for quite a while, and it, it just keeps getting bigger, so we come every year. I'm really interested in war and history, so I just wanted to come along. Flying, uh, aircraft, everything flying, you know, aviation is awesome. And just to see the, the pure power of, uh, of what we have. You know, the United States of America, I just love it. The show starts with a parachute jump by the SOCOM Paracommandos, the U.S. military's only joint service parachute demonstration team. It's really pretty to jump over the water, jump onto a beach. They're also jumping out of a World War II era C-47 Dakota transport plane. The Willa Dean is based out of Orange County's own Lion Air Museum. This was a, a mixed crowd of airplane people, beach people, boat people all at once and the, the view is spectacular with the you know, sand and blue water and blue sky. Also on display, the past, present and future of U.S. military aircraft used to protect our country now, flying in formation with vintage fighters dating back to World War II. And with weather that we have, it's incredible. <laughs> yes, and that guy had it right. He said aviation is awesome, especially this kind of aviation. Absolutely. Well, when you think of air shows, you might picture death-defying stunts. These pilots certainly have the guts and the skills to wow the crowds. And they're doing it in some custom-modified planes. Eyewitness News reporter Annabelle Munoz has their stories. If you like stunts, you'll like what Michael Wiskus does in his Lucas Oil stunt plane. I try to do some things that people have never seen an airplane do before. To be able to take the airplane, actually stop it, hover it, and do a forward somersault. To be able to take the airplane and tumble it end over end. Wiskus has been flying for more than 40 years. For the last two decades, in this plane he bought off the internet. In 1999, I bought it on eBay. Totally destroyed, and I totally rebuilt it from the ground up. Uh, redesigned the wings, did a bunch of stuff on the tail, 
made this my airplane. And there's no mistaking the color. It is a 1969 Corvette Hugger Orange. The Great Pacific Air Show is a highlight of his flying season. There's not much that's more beautiful than Huntington Beach. When you're looking from the uh, beach out to the pier on the right side and, and the water, be able to combine all that is spectacular. And when you see the Lucas Oil Stunt Plane send out streams of smoke, you'll smell something familiar. With my smoke oil, I throw brute cologne in the smoke oil. So when I lay down a, a smoke on the ground and it rolls into the crowd, everybody starts to get brutified. Here's what you get when you combine two separate Russian-made aerobatic planes and then add a jet engine. Between the three engines, I have 6,000 pounds of thrust. There's three throttles in there, one for each prop and one for the jet. I call that fun lever. And with all that power, the Yak-110 can do some incredible stunts. You'll see that in the, the spins and, and double hammerheads that I do. As you see the airplane going straight up and then I hover. Uh, the airplane and, and hold it there and then I continue to climb straight up from zero airspeed because I've got that much extra power. This is the second year pilot Jeff Bourbon has flown this unique plane at the Great Pacific Air Show. I would say my favorite venue of the entire year is at Huntington Beach. It's just absolutely perfect. At the beach it goes on for just miles and miles and there's just so many hundreds of thousands of people down there so I can really maneuver up and down the beach and, and get to show so many people a first-hand look at what the Yak-110 is all about. Wow, and check this out. This may be the future of how we get around town, jetpacks. Yeah, the stuff <laughs> of science fiction is reality this weekend at the Great Pacific Air Show. And Eyewitness News reporter Eileen Frere shows you what the jetpack men are doing. San Fernando Valley-based Jetpack Aviation does a number of air shows per year. This is the first time at the Great Pacific Air Show. And for the first time at an air show, the company's pilots are performing with two jetpacks at the same time. We're going to have a race first of all, and then when we finish the race, I don't know who's going to win yet. So the whole plan is to know who's going to win, and we don't know, but he's the boss, so I don't think I will be here allowed to win. We will see. <laughs> and then we will do some maneuver or some pirouettes. When you think of jetpacks, you might think of James Bond in the 1965 movie Thunderball. The problem with the, the rocket belt technology is the machines only flew for like 20 seconds. These jetpacks can fly for 10 minutes and Jetpack Aviation founder David Mayman says it's kind of like flying a motorcycle in the sky. And it's very intuitive. If you want to fly forward, basically you're just leaning forward and it goes that way. If you want to roll to the left, you kind of lean to the left. It's like a, a freedom. It's like you can see you are taking off, you are in the sky, you feel totally free. Like you go where you want, it's three dimension. It's, uh, it's, it's a very unique experience. And people just love it because they've never seen like a person just stand there and take off and fly before and then come back and land in exactly the same spot. That looks terrifying, Giovanna. You <laughs> it's did terrifying. This, right? You did I this. did do something similar to that, and you know what? It's not as easy as it looks. I not at all. Imagine. Okay, it's not uncommon to see planes do loop to loops at air shows, but a helicopter is a different story. Up next, we're talking to the pilots who's able to uh, pull off this stunt at the Great Pacific Air Show. And what it's like to be a passenger on board a military jet. A shark bite survivor thought this would be easy. Find out what she thought after the ride. It was America's first fighter jet, designed as a P-80 in 1944. It first saw military action in the Korean War as the T-33. It was a training jet for decades. This one was built in 1959, and pilot Greg Wired Collier has been flying it for more than a decade. But I'll be putting the jet through its paces, uh, performing vertical rolls, loops, cubinate, high-speed passes, aileron rolls, high, high G turns. Um, I'll, I'll demonstrate everything that jet's capable of doing. 
Collier named his company Ace Maker after all the Ace pilots the T-33 trained. And here's something to make you say, wow, a helicopter doing a full flip over the ocean just off Huntington Beach. Yeah, that's a helicopter. And it's not just any helicopter on display at the Great Pacific Air Show. There are stunts not for the faint of heart. Absolutely not. So what does it take to make these barrel rolls and other maneuvers look easy? A lot of skill and a specially designed chopper. Just flying around is, is a massive privilege and it's really unique and cool and I love every minute of it. I am the lucky guy that gets to fly this helicopter upside down. I've been flying helicopters for about 25 years. I do it every day. It doesn't seem dangerous to me. It was not easy to make the transition from flying straight and level right side up to being able to go upside down. Uh, there were guys doing it long before I started doing it, so I was fortunate that they chose me for the training and, uh, and I got to slot into a, an existing team called the Flying Bulls. My favorite maneuver right now that I do is called a bow turn. I'll pitch up bleed off a bunch of airspeed, and then rotate around to, on the pitch axis to the inverted position, and then I rotate again on the yaw axis as I descend inverted. When I make that 180 degree rotation, then I rotate again on the pitch axis and fly out the bottom and back from the direction I came. I've been very fortunate. I've flown all over North America and, and around the world too. There are a lot of beautiful places to fly for sure, but there's something special about Southern California. It's just a, a beautiful place to fly and I particularly like flying over the beach and over the water. That's why I'm so excited about Huntington Beach and the Great Pacific Air Show because I get to actually fly over the ocean. He is amazing. Okay, would you ever? Would you would ever? But those Red Bull sponsored guys, wow. they're daredevils. So Amazing. we're not anywhere near that level. No, no, no. I would never <laughs> even try it. One of the stars of the Great Pacific Air Show stays in the water. That's up next. Plus a pair of commandos eye view of what it's like to parachute onto the beach at the air show. And more than 50 years after this picture was taken, a former beauty queen got a chance to recreate it with Canadian military pilots. And we want to get a big thank you to everyone who stopped by the ABC7 photo booth today at the event. If you're out there tomorrow, stop by and say hi. Our photo booth will be at the festival just north of the Huntington Beach Pier tomorrow from 11 to 3. This is the Great Pacific Air Show. The Red Arrows in action. You may have seen members of the Royal Air Force aerobatic team flying their Hawk T-1A planes in formation over Southern California earlier this week. They flew over the Queen Mary in Long Beach, issuing streams of red, white, and blue smoke. The Red Arrows have been promoting the British Armed Forces since 1965. They are amazing. And earlier we showed you the parachute acrobatics of the SOCOM pair commanders. Now here's a view from what they see when they fly out of those planes. They sent us video from their helmet cameras. The first jump during the national anthem was from a helicopter over the Pacific, followed by landings on the sands of Huntington Beach. We're over the ocean and we fly in because how, how it works is we use wind. So usually wind's coming off the coast, so we'll have to use the wind to bring us back. The second jump for each day of the Great Pacific Air Show is from the C-47 Willa Dean, which flew during World War II as part of the U.S. Army Air Forces. Once in the air, the three jumpers join together before separating again to do even more stunts, and then they land again on Huntington Beach. So not only do they jump out of those planes, but they end up getting in formation with each other. They're so cool. <laughs> They're just so cool. Okay, while the planes uh, get the most attention in the Great Pacific Air Show, a boat is also playing a big role. The vigilance is the the largest fireboat on the West Coast, and community journalist Rachel Jordan takes us on board to show us what it can do. You can hear people, you know, the oohs and the ahs, and you can imagine what it looks like when you have 600 foot hose streams going out and 20 stories high, and a lot of people don't get to see that that often. So I'm here at the Port of Long Beach where I'm about to tour a $33 million boat, and I heard they're going to let me drive it too. Let's go. Right now we're on Fireboat 15 at uh, Pier F in the Port of Long Beach. This boat its uh, sister ship are the largest fire boats on the west coast and the reason why we exist is because the port of long beach is such a huge port and such a tremendous economic asset to the rest of the united states the port has about uh, 194 billion dollars 
in uh, revenue directly related to the port. And there's over half a million jobs tied to the port of LA and Long Beach. Whenever something happens, we really want to jump on it as quickly as possible. The Long Beach Fire Department has two fire boats, Vigilance and Protector. So what can these bad boys really do? The punch that these boats pack for fire suppression is unmatched. They provide almost 50,000 gallons per minute per boat. Uh, the reach of the fire boats, water streams, 600 feet, that's two football fields long. The height of these things is almost 20 stories. And Vigilance has a big role at the Great Pacific Air Show. Our role in the Pacific Air Show, it's multifaceted. We provide a command and control platform for the actual event itself. The aircraft themselves use it as a point of reference as they line up in front of the crowds. The other thing too is the fire boat provides a pretty fun water display. When you're on the beach and looking out in the ocean and you see this plume of water coming up from this boat, it's an impressive sight and I think it's a good kickoff for the, the air show. That's a whole lot of water coming out of that. That's boat. a beautiful <laughs> fountain. It looks like an amazing fountain, right? Yeah, the rainbow is coming Just out. Just gorgeous. Of it. Well, the Canadian snowbirds bring a lot of history to the Great Pacific Air Show. They're also helping recreate history for a former beauty queen. Take a look. In 1960, a then 20-year-old Margaret Powell had a unique experience. I was Miss Calgary Stampede Queen. A gentleman entered my picture into the Miss Calgary Beauty Pageant, and I won that. And then I went and competed in Niagara Falls for Miss Canada, and I won that, and then ended up in Long Beach, California for Miss International. Margaret was named Miss Canada International 1960 and was given a unique opportunity to pose with Canada's Golden Centenaires, the predecessor to the Snowbirds. It was very exciting. I was an airline hostess, by the way, so I was used to being around airplanes, but, but it was exciting that I was going to be with these seven young fellows sitting on their wing and having my picture taken. It was, it was really exciting. Now, more than 50 years later, Margaret is teaming up with Canadian Forces Snowbirds at the Great Pacific Air Show to recreate that iconic photo. The Snowbirds are really exciting. I look forward to seeing them. I'm still a true Canadian, let's put it that way. To recreate a bit of history, Miss Canada International, that's a pretty fun uh, feat. So you look at these photos and to step back in time and just to be a part of that and just to put ourselves in that position, I think it's fun, it's nostalgic, and it, it's the fun side of the air show. It's brought back many memories. It's fantastic. It's, it's really wonderful. And I, ne I never ever thought it would happen again, but it did. So many special moments like that throughout the air show this weekend. Oh, it's such a great show. Hopefully you can make it there tomorrow. Yeah, well, there's plenty of excitement watching the Great Pacific Air Show from the ground. There are even more thrills flying in one of those military jets, as you might imagine. Up next, a passenger's experience. A demonstration on fighter speed, agility, and advanced stealth. That's the U.S. Air Force's F-35 Lightning II. This fifth-generation, single-seat, single-engine fighter is designed for ground attacks and air superiority missions. It's designed to reach a speed of Mach 1.6, in other words, 1,200 miles per hour. The U.S. Air Force is also showing off its Air Combat Command A-10C Thunderbolt II. The A-10 is commonly referred to by its nicknames of Warthog or Hog. This single-seat twin turbofan engine plane is designed to provide close air support of ground troops and attack armored vehicles and tanks. Such a cool look, and you can see it so close with the video. Well, we've shown you some of the amazing things that planes can do at the Great Pacific Air Show. But what does it feel like to fly in one of these planes doing stunts over Huntington Beach. Well, Eyewitness News reporter Carl Schmidt talks to a woman who got the chance to be a passenger. When the Royal Canadian Air Force hit me up and they said, Carl, we'd love to send you up with the Snowbirds for a sightseeing trip over Los Angeles, I said, absolutely no way. You're not getting me up in one of those planes with these amazing pilots, as skilled as they are. So in my place is Maria. She's a triathlete and also a shark attack victim. If she can handle a shark bite, this is easy. So I'm a triathlete. I was swimming in Corona Del Mar State Beach three years ago, and I got bit by a shark, came out of nowhere, left, and lucky for me, I got saved by the lifeguards. 
Maria's injuries were serious, but it didn't dampen her adventurous spirit. And now, fully recovered, she's about to take the flight of a lifetime. Uh, feeling good, a little nervous, but it's feeling really neat. We got life jackets on, we got parachutes on. We are in here. I believe these guys know what they're doing, and uh, I think it's going to be pretty cool. At the controls of Snowbird 7 is Pierre-Marc Deschenais, who's excited to be taking Maria along for the ride. I've heard her story, and she's definitely a warrior, so I'm sure she'll have no problem with the flight today. Pierre said we have a really good spot, so I'll get a good view of all the planes. So uh, we'll go a tour around LA, uh, we'll go see the Hollywood sign, come back on the shore at Malibu and through the Catalina Islands. It's a once in a lifetime, just like getting bit by a shark. <laughs> it's once in a lifetime. <laughs> And moments later, Maria was taking off for that once-in-a-lifetime flight in perfect formation with the other snowbirds, taking in the sights of LA and experiencing the effects of the snowbirds' jet. We'll show them a few G and some uh, high-angle banks and stuff like that, uh, just to see how they, how they feel. braver woman than me. <laughs> Welcome back to Earth. Thank you. How was the experience? It was really cool. We went all the way up the coast, went over Catalina. It's a little turbulent up there, you know, getting to see the maneuvers. It was really cool because from the ground you have no idea how close they are. I even got to fly the plane a little bit <laughs> for about five seconds. <laughs> I had to pull out the bag once, but I didn't have to use it. Because we did do one roll and that's when I kind of got a little the burps kept coming and I was just like, ooh, that's, uh, that was a little intense. Well, thanks for joining us for this special edition of Eyewitness News, the Great Pacific Air Show. So intense, as she said, the air show continues tomorrow in Huntington Beach. And be sure to join us for all of the day's news on Eyewitness News at 11. And up next, it's local-ish, more in common. We leave you now with some of the highlights of this weekend's Great Pacific Air Show.